Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we are in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 29, beginning in verse 1 today. So get your Bible, if it is possible. Open it up to Proverbs 29. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is another place where you can study all of the Bible with me at your pace, at your convenience, using my audio Bible messages. Check it out. Go to the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Choose from one of four series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse. Click and then choose the book of the Bible you want to study. Click that and then the chapter, the section, and listen. And follow along in your Bible, which is the only thing that you need to bring to the Bible, verse by verse dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay, Proverbs 29, verse 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Suddenly destroyed because of your sin, and that without remedy. Just another way of saying, there are no overs in hell. <clears throat> A suffering soul in hell cannot say, you know, I think I'm going to delete my past life on earth and start all over again. A suffering soul in hell cannot say, I want to start over. And this time, I'll live for Jesus because I hate the horrible suffering that I'm experiencing here. There are no overs. There is no next time. God says anyone who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed. That means hell. And that means no remedy, no parole, no mercy. Verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And this is why we should pray for our rulers to be good people. Everyone benefits from good rulers. The only people who don't like good rulers are bad people who want to be able to sin and get away with it. Three, whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Fast living is fine if you want to shoot up like a rocket and then crash down to hell. Fast living is for fools. Fast living drains a person's soul of life and in the end damns him to hell. Short term excitement and long-term misery, followed by never-ending torment, is a bad deal. It's a bad deal, and it's a deal that everyone who chooses to go that route must live with, and no one should let Satan trick them into thinking that they're going to be the one exception to the rule. Four. The king by justice establisheth the land. But he that exacteth gifts overthroweth it. Before the Magna Carta was established in England, many people just about went broke paying the king and the queen and their ministers bribes just to get justice. Very easy to take our Constitution here in America and our Bill of Rights for granted, but we are blessed to have them. We owe a debt of gratitude that can never be repaid to those who sacrificed and died to make sure that we not only ha have them, but keep them. Verse 5. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. So true. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot of discernment to know when we're being flattered. But when we recognize it, 
All sorts of alarms should go off in our mind. Alarms should start ringing because the flatterer wants something or he wouldn't be doing it. You know you're being flattered. So you know the guy wants something or he wouldn't be doing it. And it's important that we do not allow our convictions of right and wrong to be compromised in any way by flattery. Six, in the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. God warns about being ensnared by sin. Sin is one of the most powerful things in the world because it promises happiness and satisfaction, but instead it traps and makes the sinner a slave. Drunks are trapped by the sin of drunkenness. Some people are trapped by the sin of pornography. Others are trapped by the sin of gluttony and so on and so forth. People foolishly believe that they can play with sin and quit any time that they want to, but sin is like a narcotic. A person gets hooked. And even if it doesn't kill him, it's often very hard to get back to a normal life. Seven, the righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Some people are poor because they're too lazy to work. They should be poor, and they should not be pitied, and they should not be helped. Some people are poor through no fault of their own, and God says they should be helped. Actually, the poor among us test the reality of our faith in Christ. How we treat people who have genuine needs is indicative of whether we are saved or not. Eight. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. A scornful man is someone who doesn't respect authority. Rebels in the home, rebels on the street, rebels in the job place are nothing but trouble. You know that. They're nothing but trouble. Rebels make life miserable for people who want to live decent, respectful lives. But if you've got a rebel in the home, they ruin that household. You have a rev rebel on the team, they ruin the team. You have a rebel in the workplace, they ruin the workplace. Nine, if a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. When an ungodly person draws a line in the sand and says to a wicked person, that's enough, you can bet there's going to be all sorts of trouble. It's not easy to take a stand against sin. But if a Christian won't do it, then who in this world will do it? If a Christian won't take a stand against sin, then they should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed to call themselves Christians. And I wonder if they really are, because how much do you care about Jesus if you don't oppose sin? And yes, opposing sin will anger some people, but do it anyway, because some people will come to their senses. Some few will come to their senses and repent and receive Christ as Lord and Savior and avoid hell. And I know it's a small, small minority. But if you're not holy, you don't give those people a chance. 10. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. There's a natural Hostility between God and the devil, also between good people and bad people, between the righteous and the wicked, between Christians and the unsaved. There's a natural hostility there. The Bible says, what fellowship has light with darkness? And the answer is none. And it's a waste of time to try to make it happen, although many modern evangelical days today 
modern evangelicals today are trying hard to do it and looking very pathetic in the process too. The fact is bad people do not need a good reason to despise good people. They just do it. It comes natural. First John 3.12 says, Cain, who was of the evil one, slew his brother. And why? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. Cain hated Abel, Abel for one reason. Abel was good and Cain was bad. There's no getting along with those who are given over to sin. There isn't. The only way to appease them is to say or imply that their sin is okay. And as Christians, we betray Jesus Christ if we do that. Eleven. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it, keepeth it in till afterwards. Emotions are good. Certainly, but emotions like the rest of our personality have to be controlled or they get off into sin. God says that those who vent their emotions are foolish. They are foolish because they say foolish things, things that they wish they could take back, but the damage is done and it can't be reversed. And that's why they're foolish. Now, a godly person has emotions, but they're, they're under the control of the Holy Spirit. They express their emotions in a controlled, constructive way. Twelve. If a ruler hearkeneth to lies, all his servants are wicked. Sure. If the person in charge wants to believe lies, many of his servants will give him exactly what he wants, a bunch of lies. But a ruler needs good advisors who will tell him the truth, not yes men who will tell him what he wants to hear. If people really believe that it is their duty to serve God in whatever they do, then they would speak the truth in love, even if they knew it was going to cost them something. 13. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. In other words, for now, God is good to good people and to bad people as well. No, God does not blind sinners who look at bad things. He does not sever the hands of sinners who touch bad things. God does not cause a sinner to go deaf because they listen to or laugh at filthy jokes. More often than not, God doesn't judge people right away. And because he doesn't, some mistakenly believe that he condones their sin. But he doesn't condone their sin. And he warns that in eternity they will be punished. So don't ever believe that since God hasn't punished, well, that means that he never will. He's just being patient, waiting for you to repent. But if you don't, you're going to get it with both barrels. 14. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. So God says if a king is fair to all people, including the poor, his kingdom will be safe. Good laws are laws that oppose bad people while protecting the righteous and the weak. 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother shame. Every child needs to be instructed and disciplined, and that is the job of the parents. It may be open-minded and modern to let a child make his own decisions, but God says that is wrong. A child who is not disciplined is a nuisance to those who have to be around him and therefore is also a disgrace to his parents. I've known parents who talk about how their children have to express themselves, you know, modern evangelicals into their psychobabble. 
let their kids run around restaurants, even into the kitchen. I've seen it. Aren't you going to do something about that? Well, no, modern evangelicalism. A child needs to express themselves. Yeah, in a restaurant's kitchen? What a fool. What an idiot. They think it's psychologically healthy, but in reality, it is rebellion, rebellion going unchecked. It's disgraceful. Parents' job is to discipline and teach the children that there are borders, there are limits. There is right and wrong. The kid's going to grow up and express himself right into the lake of fire. Can't be told that you're wrong. No, i got to express myself. Okay, carry on with your psychobabble, modern evangelicals. Carry on. Ignore the word of God as you do. You'll pay for it. So will your kids. So will the rest of us who have to be around the little monsters. Not their fault. It's parents' fault. Study the whole Bible with me. Verse by verse at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen. Now, if you would like to be a part of this ministry, pray for me and God's word. And also, click the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.